Hello, good afternoon. Is it afternoon now? No, it's still five minutes left of the morning. We've made it. We've made it, ladies and gentlemen. This is a great day. I mean, there's one thing that I've still not done. It's put the chat bot on, but we are flying. Like This has been genuinely one of the busiest days of my life. Um, so I'm literally getting through. This will be the fastest show ever, by the way. We are looking at like 25 to 30 minutes because, if you don't already know, we'll be going live straight after this at 1 p.m. with... Uh, our insert coin stream, which we do, I think it's once every eight weeks, uh, we have the pleasure of being able to stream over on the insert coin channel. Uh, we are part, part of the coin army. Uh, we do have some discount codes available for you. I think it's ice cream 21. No, it's 22. Ice cream 22 at this moment in time. I am putting the chat bot on so all of the commands will work in a second. Um, but yeah, it's been a hell of a ride this morning so far already. So I do apologize if I do look like I'm a bit all over the place, it's genuinely because I am, there's no other way of explaining it, <laughs> um, but yeah, we are, I'm looking to try and get this show done in like 25, 30 minutes, and this is some building work going on outside here, now one second, oh, let me close this, I do actually have, I do have a wasp nest outside my window, which is kind of annoying, um, because I can hear them buzzing, and I'm petrified that they're going to come through into it. Well, I'm not petrified. I mean, the chances of them stinging me are probably quite slim. But the fact that the hive is right outside the window is quite alarming. Uh, but Agent Superhero's now in here nice and early. Tito's in here nice and early. Good morning, gents. How are we all doing? I haven't even poured my drink yet, which I'm about to do right now. But as I'm doing that, I might as well introduce who we are. So we are Ice Cream Uploads. We go live each and every single weekday at 10 a.m.-ish. Each and every single weekday. Uh, with the scoop, which is our, it's our, what, what do we call it? It's our staple show. Um, it's the kind of the show that we go through all the video game news. We put it onto all of our on-demand services, including all of our podcast services, which are Google Play, Spotify, iTunes, uh, and SoundCloud. They're available as and when about an hour or so after the show. Um, again, I am all over the place. I do apologize, but I wanted to hit live and then do as much as I can before our insert coin stream at 1 p.m. Obviously, that is our main goal for the day, including obviously giving you content. Do you know what I mean? We have to look after you guys too. Uh, so if you could be, if you could be legends and go over there at 1 p.m. as we play through some Saints Row, I'd very much appreciate it. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it because I was meant to play it on Friday and I've obviously, I keep on going on about it. I don't want to go on about it, but I have been feeling unwell for the last couple of days. I'm feeling much more, I'm li I feel like I'm about 90% at the moment. My throat's still a little bit hurting. I'm not going to go into any of the other details, but yeah, it's my throat's a little bit hurting, but I'm I'm much better than I have been. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it because it is a game that I actually wanted to play on Friday, but just I wasn't able to. Um, I wasn't in the mood to be in a good mood, if that makes any sense. Um, obviously, I don't want to be in a mood while I'm playing games for you guys, but you may know both of those statements are ish, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, AJ Superheroes in here as well as Tito. Very much appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, we have got some news for you today. Again, this is going to be high flyby, essentially. Uh, King Comic again, thank you very much for the host, you absolute legend. Um, we're going to get through this as fast as possible. It makes me, it, it, it does come across like it's just, I'm here just to be able to give you the news, which I absolutely am. But we just have so much going on today that I need to get all of this stuff done um, so that I can tick off other things as well. It's what happens when you obviously work in the video games industry. Post Gamescom, things come thick and fast. Before Gamescom, during Gamescom, after Gamescom. It feels like you are, be, you, you are being pulled from pillar to post, but that's why we do it. That's why we love working in this industry because you are constantly on the move. There's no way of getting around it. You have to run through all of these barriers and that's essentially what we are doing today. Let me just close all of this stuff down, save on some resources um, as I was setting up all of the insert coin stuff. Literally, so I can just go bosh, end stream, bosh, start stream on the next one. Um, but yeah, we have got four new stories today. I... I <laughs> The first news story that we've got is obviously related to From Software, right? And even though I read the po I read the article like three times before, I can definitely clickbait this. I can make this sound so much worse than it actually is. And I was gonna go with something like PlayStation buys the exclusive, which that isn't anywhere remotely true. And I thought, you know what? I can't do this to people. I don't want to be able to do this to people. So I kind of took the facts and I ran with it, uh, which is essentially what was set, uh, From Software sell shares to Sony. Now, you can see where I was coming from with the exclusive stuff because if you put so From Software or you put any other publisher in there and then put in any of the big three or big four, including Google Stadia, if we want, if we want to go there, 
it ma- makes it sound like you're leaning that the, the the path towards your comments are going to lead to exclusives and that's kind of where i was going from but i thought i can't do that to you guys tito tito's head would fall off if i start talking about playstation exclusive very much like graham did this morning when he put him down with the comment about um about spider-man being a being an exclusive which it did make me laugh i know tito was sat there seething um but yeah it did it did make me laugh so gg 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 there we go gamp ass um <laughs> i love the fact that we've got a command for that but anyway again i'm getting i'm getting if i if you, if you guys feel me like i'm going off track please just push me back on again because this this always happens i end up going off of track um so yeah if you could put me back on track i'll very much appreciate that but I think we should get into our first news story. We haven't got much time. I know I keep on saying we haven't got much time, and I'm wasting time when I'm saying we haven't got much time, but here we go. First news story of the day. It also gives me the opportunity to have a drink as well, which is great. Mm. Aldi's Elderflower Water. V- written on VGC by Chris Scullion. He says that Sony and Tencent are buying 30% of Elden Ring Studio from software. I'm not going to read that first line because you can guarantee it's going to be in here as well. But Elden Ring Studio from Software has announced that it's selling shares to Sony and Tencent, which will result in them owning a combined 30% of the company. In an official note, notice published from, by From Software's parent company, Kadawara uh, Corporation, it, it was announced that the new shares will be issued by Six Joy Hong Kong, a subsidiary of Tencent and Sony Interactive Entertainment. According to the document, once the shares have been issued, Six Joy will own 16.25% of From Software, and Sony will own 14.09% with Kado, Kadokawara. I think I said that wrong before, so I do apologise. Continuing to own the remaining 69.66%. Nice. In the notice, Kadokawara, Kadokawara, Ka, Kadok Awawa. Kadok. We'll go with Kadok because I'm butchering this big time. Uh, it says that it recognizes the enhancement of capabilities from the creation, development, and deployment of the game IP as one of the group's highest priorities. As such, it has decided to allow From Software to arrange a third party allotment to Six Joy and Sony in order to gain extra funding that it may help to publish its own games globally. Through the impend. Uh, Implementation of the fund procurement from software will aim to proactively invest in development of more powerful game IPs for itself and strengthen from software's development capabilities and will seek to establish a framework that allows the expansion of the scope of its own publishing in the significantly growing global market, the notice states. Do you know what I hate about these PR statements? I'm going to continue with the rest of the story in a moment. It's just a massive word salad in there. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't have to be, they don't have to make it sound as top level as this now i understand this is obviously to please a lot of shareholders and stuff like that you're throwing in big words or whatever fancy words this could easily read we needed more people with more experience to come in to help us ship this game around the world am i being daft in saying that like they, they, we need people who have experience in delivering games globally so ideally these people are coming in to help us do that bosh that's all you need to say anyway i digress from, from Software usually publishes its own games in Japan, but in other regions, they're handled by other publishers. Sekiro were published by Activision, for example, while Elden Ring and the Dark Souls games are handled by Bandai Namco. Last week, Bandai Namco Europe COO Arnold Muller says that the company has been working behind the scenes to secure an IP and partnerships in developers to attempt to protect itself from the impact of ind- industry consolidation. <sighs> What I find is that we have to secure IPs we create with the studios that partner with Molotov Games and Trubis. Uh, when we go to invest in IP creation, we will then invest marketing for these IPs, and we have to keep in mind that we have to get some sort of security towards the future of the studios that helps develop these IPs. The IP doesn't belong to us. Now, I agree with that. Um, so this is something that we work on, you know. It's spread the acquisition that we're seeing is affecting some of the smaller publishers in their capacity to access the best studios in the world. But we at Bandai Namco have the financial means to secure these partnerships. We work with a number of messages to secure those partnerships. You're talking first option rights. You're talking IP ownerships. You're talking minority stakes in those studios. So there's always time to secure these relationships. Now, I do absolutely agree with what they're saying in this statement here. Um, we, what I find is we have to secure the IPs that we create with the studios to partner with. We have to invest in the IP creation. When we invest with our marketing IPs, we also uh, keep in mind that we have to stop this sort of stuff. 
We have to get some security towards us for the future of the studio to help with these IPs. I absolutely agree with that. With the amount of companies that are being bought up, that are being merged into top level companies. Oh, I nearly clicked the intro again, then I do apologize. Um, I do agree with that because we are seeing so many other companies getting merged into one with the acquisitions of the likes of Activision Blizzard, uh, with uh, with Bethesda being taken up by Microsoft. Like these massive companies are taking other studios to help them put them under their banner. Like the Bethesda one is obviously the one that gets a lot of people's back up because they are uh, and. From a, from a large degree, I understand where they're coming from with the likes of Elder Scrolls that may potentially now be an Xbox exclusive going forward for maybe a period of time or maybe forever. We have we don't. We genuinely have no idea. These games now might only be acquired by, I say, small minorities, um, but they're going to be taken up by a large majority, um, which is, it's annoying. It's annoying, but I understand where they're coming from. These companies want to secure their futures they want to have these big, these big corporations come in to look after them that may be able to give them the experience that they need, may be able to distribute their games in ways that they've never seen before. So if you're a small indie company or you're a giant company like Activision or Blizzard, Bethesda, whoever it may be that's being taken over, the main point of your company is for financial security and profit. Now, if somebody else is willing to do that for you and give you large chunks of money from the outset to help make sure that happens in the long term, it's very difficult to say no. And I can understand why uh, why From Software is looking at the likes of Sony to be able to distribute their games. Because Sony have got a long history of being able to reach markets that potentially a lot of people aren't. So having that wealth of experience on their side is definitely a massive, massive pro for From Software, even if they've managed to only sell 14% to Sony and 16% to, uh, to Tencent. They've given up 30%, which doesn't seem like a lot, especially when you are a large majority owner still and you've still got a lot of say in where things happen. But they've just they've paid for help. This is the equivalent of going to Dragon's Den and selling whatever percentage of your company is to have this black book of contact, uh, contacts to go, okay, we need to go look into this market. Who have you got in here that can help us with this? Okay, we've got this person over here that can help distribute to North America. We've got this person who can distribute over in Australia. Like, it just, it makes complete sense from their standpoint. And I understand why they end up doing this now. With the likes of Dark Souls being one of the biggest, uh, uh, Dark Souls, with the likes of Elden Ring being the game of the year, they are going to be making a new one. Um, and if they can get more people playing this game, that's their main aim. Pleasing the consumers is one thing, but having millions of people buy your game and maybe sometimes not even enjoying it, but they've already got the money from you. So that becomes irrelevant then because they've, they're, they're not going to talk about the Metacritic score. They're not going to talk about the user score. They're going to talk about how much they've ended up making from the game unless the game is an absolute bomb and they have to give refunds for it, which happens once every blue moon. Well, obviously, we can bring up the cyberpunk situation. But that, that the cyberpunk situation is a one in a million. And <laughs> the No Man's Sky situation was similar, but I don't ever remember uh, the No Man's Sky studio going, okay, we'll give refunds to everyone. I don't I don't ever remember it being pulled from the PlayStation Store. I understand that the game wasn't finished. I understand they had a lot of work to do with that, but nowhere did that end up getting pulled from the shelves. It may have gone on sale straight away, but there was no way that it was ever getting pulled. So I can understand why they're getting the financial back uh, back in of this one. They want to be able to get this game to each corners of the earth and get their experience in doing so. It's as simple. It's as simple as that. We'll put it in the dragon ten, dragons then terms. If you if you're familiar with that, or Shark Tank, if it's over in America, like you understand the concept. They need help. They'll go in. They'll sell the help. They'll get that, um, which is which is great for obviously from software and understand. The way that I wanted to go with it being an exclusive, bit of a pain in the ass, but you know what I mean? I don't think that'll ever be the case unless they go for the majority shares, which I don't think From Software will ever want to do that. It makes no sense for them to be able to do that at this moment in time. But anyway, moving on to our next story. This is why I need you guys in here to put me back on track. You know, you said you would, but you haven't. Do you know what I mean? Tangent, we are 22 minutes into the show. I've got like 15 minutes left. Do you know what I mean? Come on, Tito. Story then. 
Written on VGC by Tom Ivan. He says that FIFA and eFootball's challenger UFL has been delayed until 2023. Now, hand on heart, I didn't, didn't think this was coming out this year anyway. Like, I I must have missed the part where they said that it was going to be coming out this year because I thought it was coming out next year anyway. So this isn't any news to me. Um, but anyway, uh, the upcoming UK uh, studio uh, Strikers to Inc. has delayed their release of its upcoming FIFA and eFootball Challenger UFL. Previously scheduled to arrive this year for PlayStation 5, PS4, Xbox Series S and X, Xbox One, the game will now be released in 2023. Sk- Strikers Inc.'s uh, CEO Eugene Nashilov delivered the news in a development update video, which is available to b- view below. We're obviously not going to listen to this. The quotes are here for us. It's nothing new to say that this game is of immense technological uh, complexity, one that needs to simulate a full range of football mechanics and techniques with dynamic, realistic animations, world-class players, and so much more, he said. Today, we're announcing that the release date will be moved to 2023, and many of you have highlighted that this is likely, and you were right. The game is now approximately 80% ready, and we need more time to finish this development, National Office said. The players can expect the update in the game's release date this September. UFL will be free to play a game focused on fair play ideology, which will see fair play, uh, fairly played matches with similar skilled opponents, according to Strikers Inc. The first UFL gameplay footage was shown in January, and part of his presentation in with it was also revealed that Cristiano Ronaldo will be one of the game's five ambassadors. With fellow players like uh, Ale- uh, Zinchenko, Romelu Lukaku, Roberto Firmino, and Kevin De Bruyne will also help promote the game. Now, now, I'm trying, to be super ta- uh, I'm trying to be super tasteful with this. Not because I'm in affiliation with anything that we do with Konami, but in terms of how people deem video games to be so easy to make, this shows that they have looked at the products that they've got and not happy with it and delayed it. Like that, the people will always get my recollection with that. However, I'm fairly certain you it, it was UFL that was pointing fingers and poking fun at other game developers like uh, Pro Evo of eFootball and FIFA, saying that they can do better in less time. Now I may have got and that may be me going way off the rails with this, but this just shows how difficult making football games or any game is. You can't say, oh, we can do it better, we can do it faster, we can do it quicker, we can get, we can have the best thing on the market and then have to delay a game because you're not happy with it. Like, I love the fact that they have delayed the games. I will always back anyone who delays their games to add ugh, polish. But if you deem it not, not, not playable, absolutely fine. You delay it ready when it is. But to poke fun at everybody else at the, in the same breath when you were promoting your game to then have to delay it, it, it kind of feels inevitable at this point that this might not be the game that we are wanting to be able to play. Like, I, I love the fact that we're getting more football games on the market. I am a football game nerd. I have shelves full of the worst football games you are ever going to play that I still play. Do you know what I mean? Like, I I love finding 50 PCX games that I think, oh, what? Dream League International. Like, it had Roy Keane on the cover. It's probably one of the worst football games you're ever going to play. I've played it. Probably never play it again, <laughs> if I'm being genuinely honest. But... It's one of these things that if you you can't if you if you want to be able to try and poke fun, that's absolutely fine. But sometimes it's gonna come back and bite you in the ass, and I feel like this genuinely has. And I don't mean in terms of this game will be god awful, but you're having to delay your game because you're not happy with it. Like it's not easy to be able to put out any games, regardless of what the genre is. So I wait to see more of this in December, apparently. And then it will be a year since they've released the Ambassador Project way back when with Cristiano Ronaldo and the rest of the other four four, uh, Premier League footballers or ex-Premier League footballers in terms of Lukaku. Um, So yeah, I suppose we wait with bated breath as to what this game could potentially be. Uh, Wes says, word up, homies. Good morning, sir. Or good afternoon now. It's quarter past 12. Um, Which moves me on to my next point. We've got two more news stories left. Let's get into them. Ubisoft's guitar learning subscription service Rocksmith Plus is out next week on PC and will launch with 5,000 songs. Now, I cannot tell you how excited I am for this game. Despite this game being out for nearly 10 years, I know this is obviously going to be a re-release and maybe the fifth version in the franchise, but I need to buy an electric guitar to be able to play this because Guitar Hero, I know this isn't, you can't really compare them, but Guitar Hero is genuinely one of my favourite games of all time. Take any of them, I don't care. Metallica one is my favourite because I absolutely adore Metallica. But 
I want to be able to play guitar. I have an acoustic guitar that my wife bought me for Christmas about four years ago. I am terrible at it. So having something like this with an electric guitar where I can physically play the notes, the notes are coming up on the screen and I have to think, okay, that's fucking B minor or whatever. I don't know guitar stuff. I don't know guitar stuff, evidently. But this is something that I'm super looking forward to. So anyway, Rocksmith Plus, the subscription service you, uh, version belonging to Ubisoft Long Running Guitar Learning Series finally has a release date and it's coming to PC next Tuesday on the 6th of September. Rocksmith Plus was, your, you may recall, originally due to one launch last summer, but Ubisoft made the decision to postpone its release. Based on player feedback during its closed beta, saying it wanted to ensure we provide the best guitar learning experience and delivers a smoother experience for all guitar and bass lovers. Nearly 12 months later, Rocksmith Plus is ready to release and will launch next week via the Ubisoft Store, promising a range of tools to help players hone their music skills. These include interactive sessions featuring adaptive uh, difficulty said to dynamically adjust to the player's skill level while they play. And the Rocksmith Plus Connect app for iOS and Android will take care of uh, note detection and real-time feedback without the need of any peripherals. Rockstar, uh, sorry, Rocksmith Plus will also arrive uh, alongside a library of over 500, uh, sorry, 5,000 songs from partners including Sony Music and Universal and that library said to span a variety of genres including rock, metal, pop, Latin, hip-hop and indie with songs from the likes of The Clash, Juan Gabriel, Alicia Keys and Santana being added each week. Those interested in taking Rocksmith for, for a spin at launch can get a month's access to the service for twelve ninety nine. Three months for thirty-four ninety-nine and twelve months for eighty-four ninety-nine. And as a loyalty offer, Rock Spa, Rocksmith twenty fourteen owners uh, and the closed beta participants can get one month free when purchasing a three-month plan. And uh, sorry, and three months when it, whenever they get in twelve-month plan. Well, there's no mention of the previously confirmed PlayStation and Xbox versions of Rocksmith Plus in today's announcement. Ubisoft says that a mobile release is due later this year. So again, it's something that I'm super looking forward to. If I do end up getting a guitar, now I do want an uh, electric guitar. It's something that I may just end up picking up from like cash convert or something for, or <laughs> off a local smacking in a pub for 20 quid. Uh, something like that, that'll be absolutely great because I can get used to play it, being able to play it again because I do genuinely want to learn how to play the guitar. I think playing guitar is probably one of the coolest things in the world and I'd love to be able to shred it up. I just, I just can't. Like I've tried with my acoustic when I've tried many different apps on my phone. Um, it just, I, I can't do it. Like my brain doesn't work like that. So having something like this, that's visualizing like I'm playing a game and I can look at the screen and figure out where my fingers are and then try to see, try to get it that way is probably the best thing. Speaking of people who could play the guitar, Endo's in there. It says, I think I need a guitar game so I can get better. Uh, you want to play guitar, you're in luck. I teach guitar lessons, says Enzo. So he's basically just pimping himself out here. I was about to say you're already a great player. I've seen him play on I've seen him play on stream and he is a fantastic guitar player. Uh great a bit of an exaggeration, but thank you. Do not get into guitar from cash converters. I can confirm that playing guitar is not the coolest thing in the world. Well, I think it's the coolest thing in the world. I think you're the coolest per the coolest person in the world. Because you can play guitar, so have some of that, mate. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't care what guitar it is. As long as I can plug the card into it and then into my PC, I genuinely have, I, I don't care. Um, it could be the worst guitar in the world, but as long as it functions and I need it, the very basic thing for it to be able to do, like a golf club, for instance, you were, like it could be playing with a golf club from 30 years ago, but if it does the thing that you need it to do, it's got a nice shaft. I mean, don't clip that. It's got a nice shaft. It's got a good head at the bottom of it. Like, the grip's fantastic. This is ridiculous. Like, I'm genuinely not trying. <laughs> I'm not going down this corridor purposely. It's just sending me there. Um, I'm starting to go red. Can you see I'm blushing? Um, as long as it does the job, I don't care. Um, so it's just one of those things. Uh, anyone could play guitar, man. So many people think that they can't uh, or their mind can't get their head around it, but it's just a matter of being consistent. I thought the same when I started driving, mate. Like... I tell you, I started taking driving lessons and then I hated it. Like, I just couldn't get my I just could not get my head around the fact that you've got a clutch, it needs to find the bike, then you have to press like the acceleration, or you you, you start your acceleration, you find the clutch, and then you're able to move, and then you're trying to stop gradually rather than stopping instantly. Like it's just one of those things it just clicks. Like one day I got into the car and it clicked, and then now I say I love driving. I do so much driving that I'm it's just tiring now. But I loved learning how to drive after that because it got I got used to being able to find it. Something clicked in my brain. And as soon as I imagine when something starts to click like that, 
then it's become so much more easier. Now, having stuff where I can physically play the stuff as I'm seeing it come through on this and it's showing me the cards in real time, I do think that visual aid will help me so much better than like the apps that I was using on my phone or listening or watching YouTube tutorials. Because believe me, I put countless hours in trying to get to, to try and learn it, but I just genuinely couldn't. I just don't think I'm musically inclined to be able to do it. But having stuff like that might be the key to open up that kind of mental block that I have when it comes to doing it. I don't know. Um, anyway, Enzo says, uh, it's the job of a good teacher how to explain the different, uh, to explain it differently to help you understand the way that you learn. Uh, David Gilmore has a pretty stubby fingers and hands and that, <laughs> that, that guy could play like fuck. Um, and West has clipped it, Bibi talking about what he wants in a man. I mean, you're not wrong. You are not wrong. But anyway, moving swiftly on to our final news story of the day. Uh, this is one for you Assassin's Creed fans out there. Uh, the next Assassin's Creed reportedly title is Mirage and a cloud, uh, sorry, and it could launch in 2023. Uh, more details have come to light about the next entry in the Assassin's Creed series. According to the latest reports, the next game will be called Assassin's Creed Mirage and could launch in spring 2023. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was the last in training in the long-standing series. Now the last rumor suggests that the game is going back to basics and will take inspiration from the first game in the series. As spotted by Games Radar YouTuber, Jonathan revealed details about this upcoming title in a video. And he says that the game will be set in Baghdad and will explore the events of the anarchy of the Samara between 1860 and 1870 AD. However, it also mentions that the game will not include a lot of the RPG elements like level systems and dialogue choices. The lead character is reportedly named Basim and is a young thief who eventually meets the Hidden Ones. Now, we don't need to go into this, any, any, any of the other stuff in there. Uh, I, I feel like we've got enough. We've got the time period. Um, I'm not... I'm not a massive Assassin's Creed nut, so forgive me about this one. The reason why I absolutely loved Valhalla, again, not being someone who's who's played the, the, a bit of the first one, a bit of the second one, and realised that it's not going to be for him. Valhalla absolutely spoken to me. Now, that could be to do with the class systems that are available in the game and the levelling system. Now, I know that'll piss a lot of people off with that because there is, it, was, it was grinding. You could pay to not have it be as grindy. Um... But I feel like it's a step backwards, in my opinion. It's like not having 360 controls in football now, in football games, and going back to running diagonally or running straight. Like It's very difficult to go back in time and not have the people who enjoyed playing it or the new people come into the game or the, new, or the people who've been playing it from the early franchise and then being able to work towards where we're up to now, where it's in a position where you go, actually, this is fucking mint. Like, this is what we've been needing for a long time. Like How do you go back and take all of that stuff out again? I know, again, this could be something that the community is crying out for, so I'm not going to speak on behalf of anyone in the Assassin's Creed community because I don't know it well enough to be able to, you know, give you a good understanding of what this could look like. But, yeah, it, it does feel like it's a step in the in the wrong direction personally, personally. So, again, I could be complete, I could be proved completely wrong with this. It could be a massive hit and people come back to it again. But they've gone so far in the opposite direction and brought in the stuff that makes that sorry that is normal in video games nowadays. I don't know. It feels it feels bizarre. Like going back in the time periods, whatever, mate. Just put pick a time period that doesn't bother me. But as long as the controls and the open world aspect and like level grinding and being able to use your skill trees and things like that and picking up like that feels very modern. Removing all that stuff doesn't. And you're going back to the old school style, which again people might be crying out for. So who, do, how, do, who am I to say? Who am I to say? I'm just giving my thoughts and opinions, very much like you give yours of thoughts and opinions. And that, speaking of which, is the end of our show. I do apologise that this has been the, probably the fastest show of all time, but it's been a hell of a busy day, and we will be going live on the insert coin. Uh, say we, it would just be me, and we're going to be playing through some uh, Saints Row on the official Insert Coin channel on Twitch from 1 p.m. So do feel free to join us over there. I'm going to go and chat. I'm going to go and top up my water. I'm going to grab a quick bite to eat, and then we're going to log on. We're going to get stuck in, and we're going to have a good old time for about three hours over on the Insert Coin channel. So do join us for that. But that is the end of the show today. If you want to help shape tomorrow's show, which will be Thursday, we still have two more shows left to help shape, then you can do that. First of all, find us on social media. It's at Ice Cream Uploads across all major social media platforms. Or alternatively, get involved with our Discord. If you're watching this in any of our on-demand services, go into the description below. All we need from you is URL plus your thoughts and impressions. We 
or I will then give you my thoughts and impressions on the very next show, which will be at tomorrow at 10 a.m. live from the studio over in Poulton. Um, I'm not going to raid anyone because what I want you guys to do is already go over to the Insert Coin channel. Keep that bad boy loaded up and you'll be able to be notified. Or I'll just appear on your screen uh, in roughly about half an hour's time. So please go over and do that. I'll very much appreciate any company that I can get over there. Um, but yeah, I do hope that you have a fantastic day. If I don't, obviously see you over in that channel sometime soon. Um, I do hope that you have a fantastic day. And as always, guys, there's one thing that I want you to do. And that, my friends... It's the Stay Frosty.